Welcome to Meeple Motivators, a series of short videos to help motivate you to get a game to the table that you have been dreading to relearn. These are not meant to be complete rule summaries, but will hopefully assist in refreshing your memory on how to play that game that has been sitting on your shelf for months. In this episode, we'll help you relearn Suburbia, designed by Ted Allspock and published by Bezier Games. In Suburbia, you will be building a customized burrow complete with residential areas, parks, skyscrapers, restaurants, and more. The goal of the game is to have more population than all of your opponents when the building tiles run out. On your turn, you will do the following four actions in order. Pay for and place a tile, or place an investment marker on one of your existing tiles. Collect or pay income based on your income tracker. Adjust your population based on your reputation tracker. Refill the real estate market. All of these steps and more can be found on the double-sided reference card. There are three ways to take a tile. The first is to purchase a tile from the real estate market. Pay the cost shown on the tile as well as any extra based on its position. Place it adjacent to any of your existing tiles and gain the immediate effect from the upper right of the tile. Then, check for effects that may be triggered on the bottom of the tile, followed by adjacent and then non-adjacent tiles. Lastly, check with your opponent to see if there are any further adjustments. The second is to purchase a basic tile from the supply. Basic tiles are suburbs, community parks, and heavy factories. Pay only the cost on the left side of the tile and place it just like you would when purchasing from the real estate market. However, when buying a basic tile, you must also discard any one tile from the real estate market, but you must pay the cost above the tile. This is useful for discarding tiles you cannot fully afford and do not want your opponents to have. The third way to gain a tile is to build a lake. Simply pay for any tile in the real estate market by paying only the cost above the tile. Then, place it face down in your burrow. This is a way to earn money for adjacent tiles, as described on the lake. If you do not wish to purchase a tile, you may instead place one of your three investment tokens onto any tile in your burrow. To do this, pay for the cost of the tile you are about to invest in, as shown on the left side. Then, cover it with the investment token. Doing this will double the effects of that tile, such as gaining income or reputation based on adjacent tiles. Note that it will not trigger the effects of other tiles as it did when you first placed it. Investments will last the duration of the game, so if you placed this tile here, you would receive this benefit twice. The second step of your turn is to check your income tracker. If it is positive, Collect that amount from the supply. If negative, pay what you can. If you cannot afford the full amount, lose one population for each dollar you cannot afford. Then adjust your population based on your reputation tracker. Every time you pass over a red line, immediately decrease both your income and reputation trackers by one. If you ever move below a red line for any reason, increase them again. This will simulate the effects of your burrow costing more to maintain as your small town grows in population. The last thing to do on your turn is to refill the real estate market. Slide any leftover tiles to the right to fill the empty space. Then, flip over a new tile from the current stack and place it into the market. When stack A is depleted, use B, and then C. Once the one more round tile has been revealed, Finish the current round and then play one more. All players will have an equal number of turns. During final scoring, ignore all red lines as you increase your population. The public goals will each award population to one player. If there is a tie, no one will gain the population. Then, each player will gain population for their secret goal only if they achieved it and there are no ties with other players. Each player then gains one population for every $5 they have at the end of the game. The player with the highest population is the winner. And that wraps up this episode of Meeple Motivators. 
We hope you're able to use this quick video to gain the motivation to get this game to the table soon.